Hello everyone. This is an airbrush cleaning tutorial for the Iowata Eclipse HPCS, the most commonly used airbrush in uh, vinyl painting for toys. I started by taking all the pieces apart. You can see here I, I started I did the took off the needle chucking nut and then out with the spring guide and the needle spring and the uh, needle chucking guide. And now I'm very carefully removing the head cap and the needle cap and the nozzle cap. Uh, there's the nozzle cap. And this is the head cap. I haven't cleaned this in uh, like a deep clean in months, so that's why everything's kind of paste it on there <laughs> hard to get off <laughs> all the paint is kind of dried things out kind of acted as a glue on the parts so and this here's the nozzle very be very careful with that because the tip you don't want to ding that there's um, a little o-ring on there uh, my o-ring is really old and kind of cracked, so I don't want to take it off because <laughs> I'm too lazy to get a new one. But uh, you might want to take that off if uh, you've got a new one so you can clean it. This is uh, just vinyl thinner, a uh, regular vinyl thinner from VinylWonder.com. And putting all the little pieces in my little cup of vinyl thinner. That's going to sit and uh, the vinyl thinner is going to start dissolving the paint in there, which is nice. I'm going to squirt a little bit down to the airbrush body. Um, once again, to really clean out that airbrush body, um, you know, best move would be to take a... I've got a little um, device that I've put on. Uh, where the hose connector goes that catches moisture because I live in a very humid environment but uh, I'm leaving that on because once again the o-ring is so old I don't want to break it <laughs> taking it off so I don't want to have to get a new one but uh, it, it's easier to clean if you take that off you can see I'm just kind of polishing it up the shop rag and some vinyl thinner and I went in there with like a brush tool to uh, kind of scrub it out. But, you know, you don't have to polish it up all the way. You, know, you just try to get it out of the where it's really building up. And this little cleaning tool here, that's nice for getting around the edges or the paint cakes. And uh, this, you know, I use this airbrush a lot. I, I, I use it several times a week. Sometimes, you know, every day. Uh, it just depends on how busy I am with a toy release. But um, I should clean it more often. You shouldn't let it get to this point. But <laughs> this, this is... Uh, this is how I work. As you can see, I'm pretty messy. You can see the the space. I don't I don't have a lot of time to clean up after myself. So <laughs> this is a nice little trick. Just kind of getting in there with a brush, just an old brush. You know, nothing, no fancy brush. Just an old cheap brush. You can kind of get around there and clean certain parts. Now I'm wearing gloves. That's another thing. Um, I'm wearing double thick latex gloves. You, you want to make sure you're using latex gloves uh, when you're handling a lot of vinyl thinner and not nitrile because nitrile, um, I mean you can use nitrile if you double up but the, the vinyl thinner breaks down the nitrile a little quicker whereas latex uh, is a little more resistant but it will break down eventually too when you start to feel the fingers swelling up and the 
the vinyl thinner starts to penetrate into the gloves and you kind of you can kind of notice you'll kind of see your the fingers kind of swollen up just change them out and get new gloves it's not worth you know the few cents that you're saving for your health you don't you don't want to absorb this stuff through your skin and you do want to use vinyl thinner you don't want to use acetone or lacquer thinner vinyl thinner is what's really going to break it all down in a pinch you can use acetone but it's not it's not going to get everything it's just going to get like surface level stuff and you can see right here i cleaned the little hole out in the cap that little hole you want to make sure you keep clean because that's what allows air in for when you're when you're spraying if that's clogged and you're trying to spray it won't it won't spray out because it's kind of like you know sucking air out of a bottle you know you're not going to have any there's not going to be any flow airflow going through now here I'm I'm cleaning out the needle chucking guide and uh, I like to squirt a little vinyl thinner after through it just to kind of spray out all the the last little bits of debris that are in there those little squirt bottles for for solvents you can find anywhere online or in any hardware store usually all right i'm dumping out some of this excess thinner so that i can more easily get to the pieces in there so i'm not kind of fumbling around like bobbing for apples <laughs> and now the main lever you want to get in between that that slot and make sure that that part gets caked up because that's where the needle slides through so you want to really get in there and scrub that clean and like I said if you do this more often than I'm doing here it uh it'll this will go a lot faster But you do what you do, you know. And now we're going to take the head cap. We're going to clean that out with a brush. Get in there and just polish that up. There we go. For our next piece, we're going to take the spring guide, clean mm -hmm. that out. And occasionally just soaking a, an old shop towel and some vinyl thinner to polish it all up. And then next, we're going to take out the needle spring. That's pretty clean already. Didn't really didn't need to do much with that. All right, what do we got next? Oop. And the last few pieces. So we're going to take ourselves the whichever one my fingers can get to <laughs> the nozzle I'm gonna clean that nozzle out now well, the nozzle can be kinda of tricky to clean out because that tiny little uh, narrow point at the end you can't really get anything through that so you definitely want to make sure you you try and spray spray out to make sure it's clean after you've kind of brushed through it if you can get a good stream then you know you're good but yeah be careful be careful you don't want to drop that you don't want the, the tip to bend or, or you know anything otherwise the needles not going to flow through there properly so be very careful with that nozzle and if you ever do drop it on like a hard surface or whatever you know just probably gonna have to buy a new one but just getting a little piece like a little replacement piece isn't gonna be too much 
That nozzle cap was pretty good. Didn't require a lot. The needle cap, that on the other hand, can really get caked up in there. All right, so after a couple of days um, of using this, I um, so, so I, put, I put all the pieces back together <laughs> from what you saw and um, tried to paint with it. It got a little gummed up, and I know exactly why. It was because I was being lazy. I did not remove my moisture trap and take out the O-ring, and I didn't give it a real full deep clean down on that area where the main lever goes into the trigger spot. So going to going to really clean it out this time. Um, this is an O-ring that I jury rigged. It looks like a broken O-ring. It's not. The moisture trap had an O-ring that for some reason, well, <laughs> it's big. It fits in it fits it fit into the moisture trap, but there was an air leak because the O-ring didn't go snug up against the uh, undercarriage of the body. And so what I did was I just cut it, took a little notch out of that spot there, of the, of the ring, <laughs> so that I could make it fit. See, right there out of that spot, I just removed a little piece so that it would fit perfectly into there. And that kept me from having to track down some specific type of O-ring. So, and it works, believe it or not. So, uh, this is the O-ring from, um, from the nozzle under the head cap. I'm just giving that a little clean because I didn't. Yeah, it doesn't really need it, but I'm, you know, I'm gonna be extra thorough this time because I was a little disappointed that I was having so many troubles painting with my airbrush after not given the full, full deep clean. That's the bright red paint that I was trying to paint with when it was kind of gumming up on me. So now I'm just getting in there with a brush and I'm cleaning it out again, doing all the same things. But this time I'm really going to make sure I give it some extra love and attention. I've had this airbrush for eight years. Yeah, it's been eight years I've had this airbrush. And it has treated me well. I've only had to replace a couple of parts, a couple of tiny parts throughout my time with it. So I'm getting in there with that big brush and just really trying to clean out the inside of the body. Make sure I get every last little bit. I'm going to show this whole process so you can see how time-consuming it is <laughs> just so you know what you're getting yourself into there are other ways to clean the body you can I've done this before in the past it's a lot of work but you can get an ultrasonic bath like an ultrasonic cleaner and you can get a glass container I'm gonna get a glass container that fits inside the the ultrasonic bath, you know, because you don't want to put vinyl thinner directly in your bath or you might, you know, mess up the plastic in the, in the, in the bath. So you put, uh, you fill that up with water, you fill the bath up with water and then you put the, the separate glass container in that water and fill that with vinyl thinner and the shock waves of the, you know, the vibrations from the ultrason ultrasonic vibrations uh, travel through the water into the vinyl through the glass into the vinyl thinner and will you can just set your airbrush body but down into there and it'll get all up in there all those little tiny spots that are hard to get to that I'm trying to get in there with all these set, different brushes I'm using it'll get in there and just knock everything loose for you you leave it in there for like 10 minutes or so I think this is what I've done in the past and um, you know it's an investment those ultrasonic cleaners aren't cheap but airbrushes aren't cheap either and you want to take care of them but you can do it manually like I'm doing here this is it takes time make sure to occasionally clean use a little vinyl thinner to clean your uh, brushes out so that you're not just you know putting paint back in there every time you you clean it and this is the last couple of little final touches just getting the last bit of it Right up in there in that last little area. And 
Gonna squirt out a little more vinyl thinner just to get the last of it through. See, see some more. You look at more paint coming out. Crazy. It just really collects down in there. So, but that that should be good. That should be good. That should do it. So there it is. Beautiful eyewater Eclipse HPCS from Japan. Uh, can't recommend this airbrush enough. It's it's the best of the best. If you're if you're toy painting, if you're using vinyl paints for soft vinyl toys, like you gotta you gotta have this airbrush. You just gotta you gotta do it. Invest in one. It will last you forever. Now this is uh, me pouring out the the dirty vinyl thinner and an old mystery paint. Um, this is how I make my mystery paints that you can buy on vinylwonder.com. <laughs> All right, so some time has passed, about 30 minutes. I've let the pieces all dry. You wanna make sure they're dry, completely dry before you start putting things back in there because you just, you don't want like, you know, wet vinyl thinner in certain certain areas of the body, especially where you're connecting the moisture trap, you know, and for the trigger and stuff. I'm gonna put everything back together start with that moisture trap then we're gonna put the o-ring back on and then we're gonna put the nozzle carefully be careful with the nozzle that tip is delicate and then we're gonna put the head cap over that to protect the nozzle tighten it up real good and then we're gonna take the nozzle cap because that nozzle cap protects the tip of the nozzle and this is the needle cap, because that protects the needle when it's poking through. And now, I'm going to take the main lever, or the trigger, and we're going to look for that little notch in the back. See a little notch? That's got to be pointed backwards when you're placing it into the body. So, that goes in just like this. You just kind of line up, line it up into the little hole down there that goes down to through the center and you'll see it pops kind of pops back up if it pops back up and it doesn't stick and you did a good job cleaning if it sticks you need to open back up and clean it some more <laughs> all right now we're going to take the needle chucking guide with the auxiliary lever make sure the auxiliary lever is pointed up when you're putting it in there and then we're going to take the needle spring and glide that over the chucking guide and then the spring guide now the spring guide this is what controls the um, the pull on the on the trigger right so that lever when you're pulling it back to spray if you tighten it up to the right like this it'll have a slow it'll it'll have a stronger pull right so have a little bit more control if you loosen it up like that it's real loose and I kind of like to keep it loose. I like to keep it right, right on the edge of loose. Just keep it, keep my fingers loose. Otherwise, your finger will start to kind of cramp up if you're painting for hours on end like I do. Then you take the needle and you want to glide it through. See how I use my finger there to help glide it through so that I don't accidentally hit the tip on the edge. You don't want to damage the tip of the needle. But before we put it in there, I'm going to use a little bit of this needle juice, a little bit of oil lubricant. Just you don't have to do this. I like to do it every once in a while. Um, if you do it like before every time you airbrush, you're gonna, you're, it's gonna be really nice and you're treating your airbrush nice. I don't because I'm, like I said, I'm lazy, but I'm doing it this time because I want to make sure this is really nice. Now you notice I pulled away when I was putting the oil in there. You don't want to risk stabbing yourself. Slide it back in there carefully. Take the, the nut, needle chucking nut, screw that on, and then there it is. Now you, there's a, a back piece that can go on top of that to cover it, a little protective uh, handle, a little sleeve. I, uh, I like to have the freedom of being able to adjust the pressure if I'm doing some real fine detail work and I want to tighten it up, you know, that's that spring guide. So I just leave it off. Also, it's easier to get the needle out, which I pull out at the end of every one. Every time I'm using it, I like to pull the needle out and clean it. So I like to have easy access. All right, now we got some air. Got the air hose hooked up. We're going to do a little test run here for you. That's spraying good. All right. 
We're going to put some bright red in here. Vinyl Wonder Toy Paint. Available at VinylWonder.com. If you haven't heard that already. <laughs> and uh, we're going to put some of that in there. We're going to paint. Make sure you put the cap back on. Can't count how many times I've left the cap off because I'm like, oh, I'm going to just paint for a second and then put it right back, you know. I'll pour out my excess back in the bottle and then boom, my elbow hits it and there goes all the paint. That's that's no fun. That's a bad cleanup. All right, we're going to take this Wonder Bot and we're going to just spray a red dot on its belly because we're just testing things out here. That looks kind of cool. All right, we're going to put a little on the top of the head. See how it's spraying. That's spraying smooth. Look at that. Nice. My airbrush hasn't sprayed this well in months. I need to clean more often. I really do. I'll put a little red paint in his airbrush cup. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think I'll... Look at that. That's smooth. Look at that gradient. That is smooth. That is nice. So you get those nice smooth gradients if you keep a clean airbrush. Alright, we're going to we're gonna try the the back. We can put a little little more on there. Let's do some overspray, some fun vintage overspray. Throw throwing on top of the oxygen tanks. Yeah, there we go. That's looking nice, nice and bright. So, it's a success. And guess what? Now we get to clean again. <laughs> yep, already. Oh, we gotta clean it again. Yes, every time you use it. Clean it well right after, cause that vinyl paint, you know, it's like glue if you leave it in there. You don't wanna, you don't wanna leave any in there. You gotta clean it out. So, um, what you're trying to do here is just you're just trying to spray until it's clear. You're, sh you're looking for clear. Now I'm putting my finger on the tip and pulling back the lever, and you can get a little bit of bubbles that way. You get a little back pressure. It'll clean up back into the body a little more. Um, it's a double-edged sword when you do that, though, because it'll get more paint back up in where the needle is. So you, if you do that, you will need to take the needle out, which I recommend doing anyways, because a little bit of paint always kind of gets up in the needle. You see what I'm doing there? That's a little better of a shot. You can see that back pressure technique. It's still spraying orange. Look at that. That bright red is still coming out kind of pinky. There's still some color in there. So we're going to take that needle out of there. And yep, see that? There's a little bit caught up in the back there. Now these little white makeup sponges, I love them because you can really see if something's clean or not when you're putting it on that white makeup sponge. And look at that. There's a little bit there. Yep. Also, they're just nice. It's nice to have these little makeup sponges around for painting techniques and for cleaning things. I like them. Guide that needle back in. Tighten it up. Yeah, I see a little bit of red still in there where after pushing the needle through it, pushed a little more paint out of the, yep, out of the hole there. It's never ending. It's never ending. Yeah. This is the price you pay for painting with an airbrush, but you know, there's some effects you get with an airbrush that you just can't get with uh, hand brushing. You know, those smooth, beautiful gradients, those those nice spot sprays. You just can't you can't get that when you're hand brushing. I don't care how long you blend. You know, you just can't do it. Also, if you can just time it out to where like you're just spending several hours a day using your airbrush painting, painting nonstop, you know, maybe taking a few little breaks here and there, you won't have to clean it as much and get a lot more painting done that way. All right, press that little bottom bu button on the moisture trap that lets the air out just in case I had any moisture. It's not humid today, so I didn't have any, but that's that. All right, so thank you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. More helpful tips at vinylwonder.com. Goodbye.